This week, we continue in our efforts to link concepts of self and identity to the shifting sands of culture and society as characteristic of modernity. As we enter the murky waters of relativity and transience, the traditional footing for moral judgment erodes. We are forced to confront the diverse and often conflicting values, beliefs, and norms of a wide range of ethnic and subcultural groups. Examples examine the particularistic claims to identity by various ethnic groups, that is, identity politics, as well as challenges to these through critiques of the essentialism on which they are founded. We are looking dead center into the abyss between any and all claims to universal truth and infinite particularism. The movement from the medieval world to the modern world is marked by political theorizing regarding the self or person as an autonomous individual, beginning with the Leviathan by Thomas Hobbes, pictured on the left. Hobbes was the first to underscore the tension between individual autonomy and the demands of collective living institutionalized in a particular social order. For Hobbes, pure altruism is impossible because the existence of even one self-interested person in any social matrix will always pose a threat, creating the need for suspicion and self-protection. Modern political forms, such as democracy, bring to sharp focus the tension between the individual and the society and the competing demands of groups. Hence, the Hobbesian dilemma has been translated into treatises regarding the problem of the autonomous self and the state, articulating the inherent nature of the problem and potential solutions, i.e. alienation contra social contract. Many current theorists, but especially the feminist, regard the dilemma and the entire idea of an autonomous self as a legacy from the past. These theorists, such as Summers and Gibson, explore ideas of connected or relational selves. While the political movements of the past, such as the labor movement, were organized around economic issues, that is, higher pay for workers, the newer social movements, and especially those originating in the civil rights movement, are often more expressive and based on shared cultural identities or cultural issues. An excellent example of this is a celebration of Kwanzaa, which is an amalgam of several African festivals marking first fruits. This is an identity issue, with the symbols and invented tradition working to create bonds among the participants. While much of the substance of identity politics is truly expressive, that is, hairstyles, clothing, and songs, the real challenge comes from deep questioning of the very notion of a universal, in quotes, man as the core feature of the Enlightenment. Rather, this, in quotes, man was almost always white, male, heterosexual, middle class, and Western. This, it is argued, provided an artificial standard against which others were judged to be deviant. And the challenge strikes at the very core of our ideas about morality and the moral responsibility of autonomous individuals. The contrast is most striking in the comparison between Nancy Todoro, who argues that women remain in relationship with their mothers, never separating as boys do, and Lawrence Kohlberg, who argues or regards autonomy as the top of his developmental moral judgment scale. Kohlberg's theory was developed using Jean Piaget's stage theory of cognitive development. Morality starts as simple self-interest and develops in stages that conform roughly to Piaget's stages of cognitive development, becoming increasingly abstract and applicable to domains outside one's own individual self-interest. Gilligan, following the lines of Nancy Chodorow, challenged her teacher, Col Kohlberg, asking why men always came out at the top, at higher stages of development. She described what she called an ethic of care in contrast to Kohlberg's ethic of rights. Gilligan's different moral voice emphasized responsibility and relationships over rights and obligations. It employs the concrete and contextual rather than the formal and abstract. 
and it consists of activities and practices rather than abstract principles. Morality is seen more as inclusion rather than as one of balancing claims. Others involved in this alternative discourse point to a morality that is contextual rather than universalistic and embedded in relationships rather than in autonomous individuals. We will return to some of these ideas when we consider the concept of constitutionalism, but let us say for the time being that this is a position more likely to be favored by groups that have experiences with subordination. These expressive social movements or identity politics have been susceptible to, in quotes, essentialism, or the idea that differences are somehow inherent. As such, they are ahistorical, meaning they fail to consider changes within the same group in historical time. Moreover, they downplay differences within groups in the contemporary world to build a group or unique group identity. Can we really talk about the women's experience? The problem became central to cultural studies in ways we will take up in the coming weeks. Post-structuralism asks a number of questions similarly. What gives a person his identity across time? What makes two people similar? Is identity indifferent or in the suppression of difference? There's an endless deferral here of any kind of definition and a destabilization of identities or non-identity just simply being alterity or other. There's a, a, a question of long versus parole, uh, gender, race, and other factors that are understood as codes. Or is this really just about power and strategy? Narratives or stories provide a venue for the constitution of identities that are temporary and culturally specific. A multiplicity of cells moves from place to place across time. We create narratives to make sense of this and of our actions. Once again, in Bella, we see the conflict between the individual and the community and American individualism as our first language. Communities exist through shared traditions, and these exist as communities of memory. The strong traditional community belongs to another time and place. It is outside the everyday experience of most urban, middle-class, Protestants, professionals who live in lifestyle enclaves. Like Bella and his colleagues, I, too, yearn for a more cohesive moral culture, and one that transcends parochial interest and power struggles.